morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Uh, so we'll start uh, today's class, which is on uh, cascade control and feed forward control. As usual, please uh, keep your mics muted, except when you have a question to ask. Uh, learning objectives for this part will be to explain the difference between feedback control and feed forward control. There will be examples of uh, applications of feed forward control. We will see examples where feedback and feed forward are both used together. You will see examples of uh, cascade control. To recap what we have already covered so far in the previous lectures, in the last two lectures, uh, PID control was covered, proportional, integral, and derivative control, and uh, combinations, like proportional plus integral and proportional plus derivative. So to look at it quickly, proportional control is the basic control action. Integral control is used to eliminate offset. And derivative control gives a quick correction without hunting. This is the uh, basic understanding of these three control actions. And P plus I is the most common uh, type of process control application. As a general rule, around 70-75% of process control is, uh, uses P plus I. And only another 20% will require derivative. So, are there any questions? from the previous lectures before we move on. No questions in the chat, sir. You can go ahead. Okay. Fine. So, what we are looking at is, uh, is an example of boiler water level control. It is called a single loop boiler water level control. On the picture, you can make out there is a level uh, transmitter. From the level transmitter, the measured value of level goes to a level controller. To this level controller, the set point is given. This is the set point. So this is measured value. And this is the uh, desired value. What will be the difference between these two called difference between measured and desired value? Error signal. Deviation. Error, or, or you can call it deviation. So the deviation is acted on and you will turn it into an output. Boiler level control most commonly is P plus I. Unless it is for a propulsion boiler, in which case PID may be required. For auxiliary boilers purposes, P plus I is sufficient. So this level controller generates an output and it goes to the uh, feed water valve. So this is a very common application. The way this will work is uh, steam flow changes. For example, if the steam flow will increase, the water level will fall down and the drop in water level is detected and it is uh, compared against the actual water level is compared against the set point. Deviation is produced. Deviation becomes an output and the feed valve is uh, open or closed. The output of the level controller goes to the feed valve. This is the uh, simple application, very commonly used but it has got some drawbacks, you will see. 
what are the reasons uh, level changes number one is steam demand will no change. that is the most common reason after the steam demand changes level will change and only after the level changes this controller can uh, react so it is not possible to avoid a change in level only after level change takes place the correction can take place you can also have a problem with the feed water inflow that water flowing into the boiler is uh, less or more in this case also the level will change and control action will follow so the controller is capable of facing or or handling difficulties due to change in steam demand or change in uh, feed water flow but in either case level will change and only then the correction can take so what is corrected is feed water flow is corrected corrected uh, is the what do you mean by corrected variable is the one which needs to be adjusted controlled variable is what do you want to maintain so in the case of boiler water level controlled variable is water level corrected variable is the feed water flow but there is no separate controller for the feed water flow itself the, the controller is only for the level so if you have issues for example the feed valve does not move freely the feed valve sticks then the correction will be delayed the sense that water level will correct slowly deviation will build up and if you remember if you put integral control what will be the result and anyone answer no offset yeah that is what you will get finally but if the, if the error persists what will be the result the integral control take okay. output increases output will keep increasing so so the controller will take care of this problem by increasing the output and the feed valve will be opened more but definitely there will be a delay in this one more problem is like when valve opens and the flow changes this relation need not be linear what is the meaning of linear relation x is equal to constant to y right the, the in practically what this means is if the valve opening increases by 20% and the feed water flow also should increase by 20% that is called linear relation so if the relation is not linear then also you will have difficulties in in control often often the valves are chosen to have linear relation but it if it is not correctly chosen or if there are any errors then also the correction will not be as you expect and more more errors will build up so how can we tackle these kind of problems what are the ways we can tackle there is one method which is called as cascade control cascade control is also called as master slave control what is the english meaning of the word, uh, word cascade never use the word what is it pointing to the phone Sorry, not in not in control. In common English, what does cascade mean? Cas cascade actually means a uh, fountain or waterfall. Or no, or waterfall, exactly. A waterfall which is which uh, which drops in steps, like from one level to another level, then one more level, uh, a series of uh, falls. That is called as a cascade. So. cascade control uh, is a serial control where you will have two loops sometime more than two loops there will be a master loop and there will be a, a slave loop or you can say main loop and a sub loop and the control is executed this way once again what is the variable that needs to be maintained is the water level so is there a level transmitter there is a level transmitter here on the level transmitter the measured value of level goes to the controller set point is given so the output of the level controller 
does not go directly to the feed valve. Instead, it is going to another controller. The, the letter FC means flow controller. So the, the, the output of the level controller goes to the flow controller. And it is the set point for for the for the for the flow controller. The desired value or set points come from the level control. What is the job of the flow controller? Is it a full full fledged controller? Yes, its job is to maintain flow of the water, feed water. So, will it need to measure the water flow? It is measuring like this. You see FT. FT stands for flow transmitter. So the water flow is measured. Measured value of water flow goes to this controller. Where is the desired value coming from? From the level controller. LC. Yeah. From the level controller's output, it is coming. So the master's command is the set point for the slave controller. So this is a sub-loop control. What will the operator set? I want to change the boiler water level. Instead of 50%, uh, I want to make it 60%. Where will I make the change? Set, set point. Set, set point for of, the, level. The, set point of the level controller. You have to make the change here. Yes, sir. Now, the advantage of this system is uh, you are using two controllers. One level controller, another flow controller. But what is the control variable? Are, are we trying to control the flow of feed water? Or are we going to control the level of the boiler? Level of the boiler. Level of the boiler. This In this example also, the only variable we are interested in controlling is the water level. But to vary the water level, you must change the feed water flow. And you have employed one more controller exclusively for controlling this. This is the example of cascade. So this is a level control is the master loop and flow control is called as the uh, slave loop or the sub loop. So there are two controllers you are using. It is definitely more expenses involved, but there are some benefits. You can see. So, for example, if this valve is not uh, opening freely, what will happen now? The, the, the way this is going to open is, if the steam flow increases, steam flow increases, water level will drop, and the level controller will increase the output. It wants to increase the uh, opening of the feed valve. But the feed valve is not moving uh, freely. What will happen then? Output of flow control changes. This, the, the, the desired value of flow is increasing, but the measured value is not increasing because the valve is sticking. So, this, the flow controller itself will increase its output. It will take care of its problem. In the previous example, this problem will result in water level dropping and the master controller or the level controller has to take care of. Here, a problem like valve sticking, which is called as a sub-loop issue, will be solved by this controller itself. Similarly, if there is a linearity problem, I open 10%, but the flow is increasing 20%. So what will happen then? Can this control the uh, boiler, uh, water level will increase? No, no. But see, the, the point is, the flow is being monitored here. So if, if, if the... So it, it will close the valve? It will immediately close because it is monitoring the water level. Yes. Oh, sorry, it is it is monitoring the water flow. Water so, flow, yes. 
yes so if the if the valve is not opening because of sticking that will be solved same way if the valve is opening little bit flow is increasing too much then also it will be solved so any kind of uh, non linearity problem or uh, imagine problems of uh, think like for example the feed pump is flowing down what will happen then feed water pump is flowing down so will this loop take care of that yes sir it will take sir, care uh, the valve will open more full exactly. full open because because the flow is being monitored that is that is the advantage of this system so uh, disturbances which are affecting feed water flow will be solved by this loop so you can see the advantage of having this level controller is called as a master controller and flow controller is called as a slave controller and if the slave controller role is to maintain the flow if the if under steady steam flow if the feed water flow is disturbed for any reason like if the pump is flowing down the correction will be immediate because the water flow is being monitored what will happen in the previous example correction will be venkatesh only after the level changes that was the problem because you are monitoring only the water level and if the if the feed pump slows down then water level will drop and the correction will take only after that this is the advantage uh you can call the feed water flow as an inner loop with its own controller water level control is called as a master loop so the since the slave control the inner loop issues in this loop will not be affecting the uh, level control all these examples valve sticking non linear relation so you have cascade control for boiler combustion control as well what is the control variable for combustion control is you want to maintain the steam pressure so in the in this case you can put steam pressure controller as the master controller it is usually a p plus i controller output of this controller will go to two slave controllers one slave is for fuel flow other is for air flow so the idea is if the steam demand is more you must uh, increase the firing rate more fuel should be uh, burnt along with more fuel more air also has to be supplied so both these loops are taken care of by two slave controllers and you must remember fuel flow and air flow are called corrected variables what is change now this kind of cascade control we look at that uh, picture but this kind of cascade control is also very common in human activities what is the meaning of delegating jobs when you say job is delegated what is the meaning of that signing out the job is distributed like like on board a vessel uh, uh, chief engineer is there second engineer is there then watch keeping engineer is there uh, ratings are there is there some kind of cascade control there also yes sir everybody at so, their so, job so there is a, there is a job to be done for example that uh, chief engineer's instruction is that today a ballast pump must be overhauled that instruction will it be given to the fitter or will it be given to the second engineer second engineer it is it is a it's a instruction to the second engineer yes, based on that instruction the second engineer will have 
all the other crew and engineers at his disposal and he will be able to do what is required for example right sir uh, for example he start the job with uh, two persons one engineer and one fitter and the job is not progressing fast what will the second engineer do he will add one more person will he should he call the chief engineer and say sir job is not going slowly or is he supposed to tackle it himself he will delegate sir so if two people are not able to complete the job second engineer will put more people in in the job on the job sir are you, are you understanding so, so that bot that uh, ballast pump overall is a sub loop Second engineer is supposed to monitor the job and take corrective action as required. Chief engineer's only requirement is that the pump should be ordered by the end of the day, right? Suppose you open a pump and you discover that there is a shaft which is damaged. What happens now? Job requires replacement. Company job center. Huh? Will the second engineer change the shaft himself, or will he inform the chief engineer that shaft is damaged? To inform the chief engineer. Right. Inform the chief engineer. Because because in a general principle, changing a major part, you will have to consult the chief engineer and take his instructions. So a damaged shaft is a. It is not a sub loop problem. It has to be. escalated to the master loop that is you have to take it to the chief engineer and then you take the decision are you understanding the principle but uh, putting more fitters putting more engineers that second will take care because that is called as a sub loop problem so these are very common principles used in uh, in lot of application so if you keep that in mind your understanding in engineering also will be better so if you see this diagram shows like this what is this part this is the main controller what is it telling boiler steam pressure controller so you need a set point for this set point for steam pressure and you need measured value for steam pressure and the output will come this is the controller's output where is this controller output going is it going to the fuel and air no it goes to fuel and air controller, controller and airflow. air flow controller and actual air fuel flow is measured here actual required fuel flow comes from here and the correction takes place here output to fuel flow control valve how is the air flow control damper position damper. damper position is there so you have put of the steam pressure controller is coming to the air flow controller here the measured value of air flow comes desired value of air flow comes this way and then the output goes to the damper so this is also a very clear example of cascade control widely used in boiler especially for uh, tanker boilers or boilers which require which are uh, which which drive machinery like a turbo alternator or copt so these are a few points cascade control is serial in nature the meaning of serial is the output of one control becomes set point for the next controller slave loop dynamic should be faster than master loop what is the meaning of that this is what we said that this inner loop correction should take place fast the controller itself should be faster than the master controller does the same rule apply in uh, hr functions also what do you think if you are a second engineer Your yes sir it applies it applies, it applies. if you are second engineer you have to take a step faster than uh, informing that to chief engineer 
if you can solve it by yourself that's better yes uh, uh, ideal situation for uh, in most hr function should be your your chief engineer should be a very relaxed person and if you are second engineer your junior should be very fast right sir then your life will be very comfortable right unfortunately often that is not the case often often your chief engineer will be very fast and demanding and your juniors will take life very easy then the second engineer life will not very easy then okay for that for that there are other tuning methods we'll talk about in a different class all right so there is this uh, additional controllers are required in cascade it also requires additional measuring device these are all the Uh, characteristic of this. You also have one more type of control. This is called a split range control. Here, the uh, idea is the controller output goes to two different correcting units. So the controller generates one output, but it'll go to two different correcting units. The output will have two ranges. For example. Uh, if a controller output is uh, uh, up to 20 milliamps it will be split into two ranges it can be from 0 to 10 or 4 to 10 like that it will be there and it and the upper range is divided like this then one range operates one correcting unit and the other range operates other correcting unit if you see an example like driving how do you control the speed of your vehicle what are the two correcting units the brake and accelerator one is accelerator other is the brake so when do you apply the brake what do you do to the accelerator before you apply the brake sir jos you 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 reduce the accelerator to minimum reduce and only then you will start applying the Uh, break yes. uh, before applying the accelerator break must be uh, released so that is an example of this you can also have example like air conditioning where uh, shipboard air conditioning is is it only cooling or is it also involves heating involves heating okay. so okay. so before you start heating will you stop cooling Yes, sir. Yes, only after you stop cooling fully, the heating will start. So these are all simple examples of uh, control called split range control. So what we have seen so far up to here, this is called error based control, where uh, uh, error develops and with an error developing, correction is taking place. so they are all called as feedback control so uh, example is boiler combustion steam flow is the uh, load when steam flow increases pressure will drop then when the pressure drops the drop is measured and corrective action takes place based on the amount of deviation what is the correction increasing in the firing rate so this type of control is called as for all the control you have discussed so far till now is called as feedback control or also called as error based control or deviation based control uh it is it is very widely used it has got some advantage and disadvantage advantages is uh, deviation will result in correction irrespective of the reason what is the meaning of this it doesn't matter what is the reason for the drop in water level or steam pressure whatever may be the reason correction will take place it is also easier to design and adjust this part you will see last class we discussed about how to tune the pad controllers 
and you can adjust this easily. Disadvantage is it is a reactive control. Only after the correction takes place, uh, sorry, only after deviation takes place, correction will, will, will take place. Predictive control is not possible. Predictive means anticipating um, problems that will happen. So whenever frequent changes take place, the system can become unstable. Then what Excuse is me, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you told that uh, this is not predictive control. Yeah. But the derivative is a part of anticipatory control, right? Sir? No, no, no. Derivative is not anticipatory because derivative is also it is DE by DT. Out of the three, it reacts fast. It reacts fast. But it cannot uh, do beforehand. Error even for derivative control, error has to take place, but it does not go by the value of the error, but it goes by the rate of change in error. Do you agree? So, derivative control is also error based. It is not. Good morning, sir. Sir, we are having so much of uh, controls in order to avoid the error and to correct it but still then why we are when we are taking a calculation we are taking it from 4 to 20 milliamps no why not from 0 to 4 it's why we leave the 0 to 4 part that is because for for to create any motion uh, movement you need some uh, reserve in your pocket for example if i if i mean to say that only by zero current the valve will reach its close position. You cannot make the current less than zero, no? Yes, sir. So, so you need you, both ways. You need a you need a cushion in the sense that before my output reaches its maximum possible value, the valve should be at its uh, either end, whether it is whether it is fully open or fully shut. You should be reaching it before the maximum possible value of the control is reached. So controller controller can actually vary the current from zero to twenty, not twenty. Sorry, yeah. zero to twenty-four milliampere, zero to twenty-six milliamperes. The current will okay. vary. Yeah. But the uh, actuation should be set at four to twenty, like. Okay, sir. Thank you. The, it's always the case. So you, any output should not be at its. Uh, Extreme level should reach the actuator at its extreme level. Thank you, sir. The, the extreme levels of the actuator should fall in the extreme levels of the controller output. Yes, sir. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. We are Venkateshan, sir. Here, one question from Jagan. In boiler, is split range control used? No. Thank you. Split range control is normally used when you have two different actions to take place. Like sometimes you can use it for jacket cooling water. If the jacket cooling water uh, requires, normally jacket cooling water requires cooling or heating? Both. Cooling, sir. Cooling. Your, your normal understanding of jacket cooling water is, sir, is for cooling, right? But both, both, both. both the heating and as well as cooling it. Yeah, but but the heating function normally is not controlled. It is manual. You know, normally in many vessels, once a vessel is in port and the jacket cooling water heater is put into use, it is not it is not an automatic or control function. It is it is it is manual. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Suppose you have a vessel. Imagine uh, because uh, if your port stays for long. Can you allow the jacket water temperature to drop to some 60 degrees and then again uh, start increasing when the vessel is sailing? This is something you can do. But suppose the vessel is in port for very short periods, then it will be better to maintain the jacket water at a um, uniform temperature, even in port. So in that case, what will happen is uh, 
the steam heating will also be automatic. The vessel comes into port, cooling will be shut down and heating will start. You start the engine, heating will reduce and cooling will start. So you, you can you can do like that in the case of uh, jacket cooling motors. The general generally split range is used when two opposite uh, control action uh, corrective actions are required. That is why driving is an example or air conditioning is a good example. Okay, can we move on to this feed forward now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in feed forward control. What is measured is the disturbance. What is the meaning of disturbance? Disturbance means a change in, in, in a value. The disturbance can be on the input side of the process or you can have it on the output side of the process also. You will see examples. So, in the same boiler, if the steam flow is measured, steam flow is on the output side, Yes, sir. Yes. So, so if steam flow is uh, measured, and as soon as the steam flow starts increasing, if I increase the firing rate, can you do like this? Yes, sir. Because whenever yes, sir. steam demand increases, we have to increase the firing rate. Yes, sir. We have to increase the firing yes. rate. Yes. Thanks, sir. Okay. So, can you not have a control where increasing steam flow will also mean firing rate is increased? It is possible to do like this. If you do this way, the correction will be faster. This type of this type of control is called feed forward control. So, when we said forward control, measure the disturbance. Steam flow is a uh, disturbance in the output side. Be like this. Excuse me, we are Venkatesham, moderator here. We have 10 minutes left for this session. Thank you. It's all right, it's all right. Uh, sir, I had a doubt in this, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Sir, uh, go ahead. Uh, does the water controller come into this part? Like, uh, based upon the steam flow rate, does the water controller work? Uh, is there any setup like that? Definitely, definitely. It's very much there. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. It's like steam flow is measured and uh, firing rate is increased. Okay. Level is also measured. In fact, it is very common for water level because boiler water level has got this problem of uh, welding and shrinkage. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That so, because uh, this feed forward controller solves that uh, what what doubt I had. Like, does it really calculate your steam flow rate for the water controller to work? So now this statement, I think it's uh, it gives me the answer now. Yeah, you, definitely, sir. definitely. If if you if you work in a tanker with a sixteen kg boiler, you will see that uh, on the steam outflow line there is a steam flow. Measurement is there. Usually, it will be a venturi, uh, venturi tube or you know orifice plate like that will be there. Exactly, sir. Arrangement is that as the steam flow increases, uh, feed water will open more. Okay, sir. Okay. So, so this type of feed forward is called load based control. Why this is called feed for uh, load based is because steam flow is the is the load. And based on that, we are uh, controlling this. But feed forward control is difficult to use alone. Alone in the sense that without feedback, if you want to control, it is not easy. The reason for that is the actual control variable is not measured. What is the control variable for boiler? Steam rate. Steam feed water. No, no. Controlled variable for boiler combustion control. Fuel, uh, fuel, fuel, and steam pressure. Steam pressure. Steam. steam pressure is a control variable. And here, what are you measuring is the steam flow. Without measuring the 
steam pressure it is not possible to control exactly you will see you will see example as you see you take this case this is this is an example of heating with uh, feed forward control what is the purpose of the heater is to heat some liquid it can be water or fuel or any heater any liquid heating is done by steam this is a steam heating valve suppose somebody says uh, 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 this is a heater and your job is to maintain the temperature of the fuel at for example is a purifier heater and you want to maintain the temperature of the fuel to 90 degrees 95 degrees will you put a temperature sensor here yes sir can be at the output yes sir that, that is what you normally expect that i should put a i should put a temperature sensor here and based on the temperature measurement i'll open the steam right if the, if the temperature is less i'll open more steam but see this case here what is being measured is the oil flow this is a flow transmitter that the so the flow rate is measured and sent and what is the red line is the temperature 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 transmitter so the temperature of the oil is measured flow rate of the oil is measured based on these two values will it be possible to decide how much to open the steam yes possible yes it is possible so based on that calculation the steam valve will be opened okay sir so one doubt on that sir yes go ahead please if your heater efficiency drops yes and the output temperature is not reached even though you have set point suppose 95 you have set at the purifier mm. and the temperature has not reached mm. so then how will you check on that sir that error will, that is that is a problem with this because it will not calculate it will not take care of that and we said it is not easy to use it alone okay sir so okay, your sir. point is correct if the heater efficiency drops or even take a case the steam pressure itself drops what happens then steam pressure drops then also your efficiency comes down yeah steam pressure Put temperature drops then your calculation is gone wrong on, on what basis will you do the calculation is you will expect that i am giving 6 bar steam pressure here this bar steam is here what will uh, the oil comes at this flow rate or oil comes at this temperature based on that the valve should be open 30% if the see this is the meaning steam flow is measured okay control variable is outlet temperature that's what we want to control temperature of liquid is measured so take this case when the flow increases what will happen what will this controller do it will open more steam sir like uh, it will tell to more steam it will open more steam because the calculation is already there for this much of yeah. this much of oil temperature i must open like this same way if the inlet temperature increases what will it do so it will reduce sir it will reduce the so it will solve this problem based on your accurate calculation you have to calculate accurately this is my heating capacity in the heater this is the temperature at which oil is coming this is the flow rate at which is coming you do that calculation and the controller generates that output now the issue is just like the point raised by the student is the steam pressure falls or the heater is fault then this controller cannot solve that issue because you are not even measuring the output you are not measuring the output you are not measuring this so what is commonly done is that you need to put both so this is the reason we said effective feed forward control requires accurate calculation and modeling that is the simple meaning is that you should know that for this much flow rate and temperature this much heating is required 
if any unexpected change takes place, unexpected or what you have not uh, taken in your calculation, you cannot do any control. That is why to solve this problem, we use it in combination with uh, feedback. So you, if you introduce feedback, it becomes like this. This part remains the same. This is a feed forward part. It remains the same. What have you added now? What is this? Temperature, sir. Yes. Temperature, temperature transmitter is there. Temperature transmitter is telling like this. Now you say I want 95 degrees. Set set point here. This is the controller. So this will be your, your usual uh, P plus I controller. So the output of this controller will come. Uh, purifier heater should be PID. So it should it should uh, output of it comes. These two outputs are Combined. This is called as a summing relay or a summing function. Both the outputs will be added and it goes for the uh, steam heating. So in this case, it takes care of both. So if the if the oil flow changes, definitely it will correct. If the temperature changes, it will correct. If the steam pressure changes or the efficiency drops, in that case also it will correct. So all this is there, inlet temperature is low, most in <coughs> Sorry. Uh, sir, one doubt, sir. In this yes, yes. case of controller, yeah. uh, which is the master and which is the slave, sir? This is not master slave. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Master slave is uh, serial. Okay, okay. Sir. This is parallel. You can see this is parallel. The output of this controller goes Parallel to the output of this one. They are added up. Here there is nothing called master slave. Okay, sir. But there is a question of controller to the main controlling part. That you will see. They both are not uh, equal in their effect. That part you will just see. So if steam pressure falls, will this take care? Or if the heater gets fault, will it take care? All of this, this controller can... Yes, sir. It can take care. Excuse me, we are Venkatesan. Here one question. Definition or difference between feedback and feed forward? Comes, comes later. We'll see. Sir, my name is Venkat. I have a question, sir. A little louder, please. Yeah. My name, my Definition name is and... Question, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, as you have mentioned, uh, uh, swell and shrinkage, sir, by using only feed forward uh, type of controller, we can uh, actually tackle the issue, right, sir? Yes, yes. That is, that is why it is used. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. That, that is why it is used. If, if, you, if you don't use feed forward for water level control, the problem with this swelling business is that uh, in, a, in, a, in a boiler, uh, what is the temperature of the water? Is it a is it a fixed value or does it change? It changes, sir. According to the requirement, it changes. Yes. No, no, no. Water, water temperature. Boiling water is boiling inside a boiler, right? So, if the temperature of the boiler water is it a fixed value or does it change with pressure? Depends on changes what pressure. Changes, uh, with changes with pressure. Pressure. Uh, changes with the pressure. Right. So, so what is going to happen is imagine that in your boiler, uh, pressure is sixteen bar. Sixteen bar steam pressure will correspond to something like two hundred and five uh, centigrade temperature. I mean the water will be at two hundred and uh, five degrees when sixteen bar steam is being produced. Now, imagine steam demand increases. When the steam demand increases, what will happen to the pressure in the boiler? It will reduce. It will reduce. When the pressure drops to, let us say, 15 bar, the boiling point, or what is called temperature, will also drop. It may be, let us say, uh, 200. So, what is the temperature of the actual water? 
if if steam pressure drops to 15 can the water temperature also drop to immediately to 200 no sir it cannot so the water in the boiler be at 205 degree centigrade but the boiling point is lower than that it is only 200 degree right sir so what is going to happen inside the boiler boil up you are in the generation of steam becomes very very rapid you will get steam bubbles forming steam bubbles are forming even otherwise but the rate of steam generation becomes very high and the steam bubbles form throughout the boiler and uh, steam occupies much more volume than water right then it when when water turns to steam so what is going to happen is through the boiler very large number of steam bubbles will form due to this the water level will rise the real rise in water level so why is the water level rising is because steam pressure is dropped suddenly why is the steam pressure drop suddenly because demand increase suddenly so if i have only uh error based control what will the controller do then water level is rising what will the controller do it stop reduce level it will close it the feed stop the flow stop the feed will start reducing the feed water but what is required steam demand is increasing so what is required now see what is what level is required more water actually give more water Awesome. that is the reason so so especially in a boiler feed water this uh, feed forward control is also used along with this so steam demand is also measured and uh, water level is also measured okay that is what you call as a two element water level control okay coming back to this point so you can see this is a this part is feed forward and this part is feed back and the combination of this it will be possible to control much more effectively so when both are used together the feed forward will do the main controlling but its control will be coarse coarse means it will not be exact as soon as the steam demand increases feed water will increase or as soon as the steam demand increases firing rate will increase but the feedback control will give the exact value how to maintain if you want 16 bar finally 16 bar will come because of the feedback control so this is the comparison when you use together the first reaction always come from feed forward part and it will do the bulk of the correction but the fine adjustment is done by feedback there are other examples of feed forward and feed back control co combined control one is avr the purpose of avr is to maintain terminal voltage when the load is changing correct now <clears throat> normal feed back control means you measure the terminal voltage and when the terminal voltage reduces you can increase the uh, field current but feed forward loop means you you look at the load current why should terminal voltage drop in, in an alternator if the load increases when when the load increases the load current increases there are many reasons you, you would have studied there is there is armature reaction there is a voltage drop inside the armature there is governor's droop because of it the rpm drops so for all these reasons terminal voltage will reduce so the avr measures the terminal voltage and then it corrects that is called feedback control feed forward means you measure the load current so as soon as the load current starts increasing you can increase the excitation current and feedback loop works on the terminal voltage so so 
you can have avr which is only error based or which is error and load based definitely the combination will be faster so to summarize these are the few things feedback control is very common feedback control is always error based that means uh, deviation will take place and then will be corrected feed forward is not based on error it is based on disturbances disturbance can be a load factor it can be what is happening on the input side of a process but it, it looks at disturbances or changes and in some applications you can use them in parallel cascade control is serial in nature and there will be multiple loops 